All right, so, uh, hi. I was talking to some folks about video games at Auto Auto, and I uh, got some good suggestions. And I realized, like, lots of companies have game night and stuff like this. And some people were talking about first-person shooters and strategy games and board games. And um, nobody suggested my favorite game, which happens to involve rocket science and orbital mechanics and Newtonian physics and all that fun stuff. And I was talking to one or two people, and, like, not everybody knows this stuff. And some people think it's interesting. A lot of people don't. That's cool. So I figured I'd make like a teaser, um, five or ten minutes of like things you probably didn't know about rocket science, um, as exhibited by Kerbal Space Program. So we're going to start a new sandbox game, or just call it the demo, whatever. Uh, sandbox basically means I don't have to buy rocket parts, just like everything is unlimited and so it makes it much easier to do whatever. So this is our space center. This is the building where we built rockets. And funny enough, um, with the way the simulations work, it's actually way easier to build uh, rockets than it is to build planes. So if people find this interesting, I'll do a quick thing on rockets, getting to space, all that kind of stuff. What does it mean to be in orbit? Uh, and then if people find that interesting, we can do planes, and I'll explain why planes are actually harder to build uh, than rockets, assuming you don't have to deal with things like how the rocket engines actually work. In this game, as you see, we just sort of attach an engine, right? And that just works, assuming that there's fuel for that engine. If you have to actually think about how the engine really works, then rocket science becomes way harder than planes. But if you can take engines for granted, then space rock is actually not so bad. So this is a capsule. We'll have uh, a Kerbal, Jebediah Kerman, uh, in our capsule, which is uh, Kermans and Kerbals, what you call people in this game. Anyway, fuel tanks. So this is where the people go. There's no life support in this game. So all you really need to do is uh, attach some fuel. Pick yourself an engine, like this one, for reasons I'll explain later. And uh, maybe we want to put a parachute on it so we can land. Which of these has parachutes utility, maybe? And it's like parachutes. That's a parachute. Boom. Now we check Slack. Somebody pinged me. What is the launch timeline of the widget? Somebody's asking me. Well, they can wait five more minutes for me to finish this demo for me to get back to them. See? Work never ends. All right. So name this spacecraft test one. Save it. Go to the launch pad. I have no idea how long this has been recording. Uh, it's 8.13 now on my clock. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully this doesn't go too long. Anyway, as you can see, we have a rocket on our launch pad, which is next to the uh, Space Center that we saw before. Um, we have our Kerbin, who's over here. He can go on EVA, which is extravehicular activity, as our astronaut. He uh, has a jetpack, but the jetpack is actually not strong enough to fly around in gravity. So I'm not going to leave this ladder right now, or he'll fall and he won't be able to get back up. But maybe we'll play with that again later. So we'll get back in. And uh, we're going to launch. And the first thing we're going to do is what everybody thinks is like, this is how you go to space. Everybody thinks going to space is like going straight up. So we'll try that. So straight up. So this is our rocket flying in there. And I've launched our parachute at the same time, which is not so good. So revert the flight, revert to launch. And the reason why we launched the parachute at the same time is because my camera is blocking what's called the staging. Move the camera to like there. It's not blocking anything. So here you can see the engine and the parachute launch at the same time. So this is just one of the game mechanics, how staging works. So we need to launch them at separate times. So try again, straight up. Now the parachute is not yet deployed, so we can deploy it later. So everybody thinks going to space, go straight up, right? And so let's switch to the map view. And so you can see why that's actually not correct. So our rocket is going straight up. And because of the rotation of the Earth, our trajectory is actually already a parabola or Earth or Kerbin, whatever the name of the planet is. So we'll, we'll continue to watch our rocket, just go more or less straight up until we run out of fuel, which you can speed it up a little with some time acceleration because you can do that in video games. Wait until the fuel runs out. Almost out of fuel. We're at uh, 30,000, 30 kilometers, 35 kilometers, and we're out of fuel. Now, because we're moving up at 1,800 meters per second, which is like 5,000 kilometers, which is several thousand miles per hour, we continue to go up for a little while, which is great. So you think like we're in orbit, right? Like you see the curvature of the planet and all this sort of great stuff. Like, great, are we in orbit? 
But if we look at our map, we're just going to go straight up and fall right back down. All right, so in order to achieve orbit, you actually need to go sideways really fast. And the reason for that is to be in orbit basically means you're falling around the planet as gravity pulls you in. So we, if we were going this way, faster than gravity pulls us down, then we sort of fall in an arc around the planet. Gravity just pulls you towards the center of the planet. But you're going sideways so fast that you never actually go down, you just go to the side. That is what it means to be in orbit. And that is why rockets don't go straight up. In fact, rockets do what's called a gravity turn, which means that almost, almost immediately, not quite, but maybe at 100 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour, which is less than a mile up, all rockets, including in real life, they actually start leaning over and they start actually firing sideways as they go up. And it's a delicate balance between how much sideways do you go to gain horizontal speed versus how much do you go up to get out of the atmosphere. Because while you're in the atmosphere, you have air resistance. And so air resistance slows you down, which means you have to spend more fuel, and it heats the aircraft more, all sorts of bad things. So you want to get to the thin air as fast as possible, but you don't want to go get too much velocity upwards. You want most of your velocity going sideways. So it's a delicate balance, and there is actually a correct trajectory which minimizes the amount of fuel it takes to actually achieve orbit. Uh, and to do that is what's called a gravity turn. That is the most efficient way to achieve orbit. Um, so we'll do that next. I'm not actually sure this craft has enough fuel to get properly in orbit, but we'll, we'll try. Um, but for the moment, just for fun, we're going to ride the spacecraft all the way to the top of our orbit, which is right around here. And now we start falling down. As you can see, we're going down the parabola. We'll fall for a little while until we hit the atmosphere, which is right around here. And uh, the spacecraft might burn up in the atmosphere. We're going pretty fast. As you can see, we're gaining speed now as we fall, because we haven't really hit the thick air. Once we start to hit the air, right about now, speed will actually start to slow down. This is the vertical speed indicator up here. Hopefully, we slow down quick enough that I can... You can't open your parachute a million miles an hour. Right, so now we're slowing down. You need to slow down faster, slow down faster. That's not good. Bad things are happening. Very bad things. Definitely not slowing down fast enough. Can't open the parachute. Still can't open the parachute. Still can't... Nope, we're dead. All right, that didn't work. So let's try again, but this time, rather than just go straight up, we're going to go sideways. I'm seeing it's 8.17, so I spent oh, 18, So I spent five minutes talking about the first launch. So this video hopefully is not too long. So now we're going to try launching, but this time, again, we'll fix our staging. We're going to go up a little bit, and then almost immediately I'm going to tilt sideways. And we'll see when, when we run out of fuel what our orbit looks like uh, and how different that is. So throttle up to 100%, and up we go. So wait until we get about 100 meters per second. And I'm going to start to lean over a little bit, just like that. I'm going to actually throttle down a little bit. So we're, we're, see we're gaining speed. I don't want to gain too much speed while we're in the atmosphere. I just want to kind of go up, get through the atmosphere, and then we'll start to increase throttle. This is so that we're not burning all of our fuel fighting the air. Um, we'll burn all the fuel once we're out of the air. We have enough thrust with this engine that we can still accelerate uh, and go up even though we're uh, still deep in the atmosphere. So what you also notice is I, I toggle, this is what's called stability control. We could talk about what does it mean to be prograde and retrograde. Um, prograde is the current direction you're traveling. And so I've set the autopilot to point in the current direction we're traveling. And what you'll see is we're slowly tilting over more and more. And that's because gravity is actually sort of slowly pulling us down as we uh, move along our arc. Um, and I'm allowing it to do that because that sort of is a proxy for an efficient trajectory. Now I'm actually going to speed up the engines a little bit because now we're higher up in the atmosphere and uh, we're starting to uh, go sideways pretty fast. Hopefully we don't go too fast in the atmosphere that we burn up. We need to actually go a little higher so we don't burn up. So I'm going to do that. So we're just sort of fudging the trajectory a bit, trying to get as efficient as we can. I'm going to run out of fuel in a second. All right, there we go. So this time, now that we burn sideways, not straight up, we're still going to make it to space. But as you see, our line, our trajectory, looks almost more like an orbit. So it's way more circular. And if we had another 45 seconds of fuel or so, that line would have actually gone all the way around, and we would have achieved a full orbit. So let's actually uh, revert this flight. Um, let's build a rocket that does go to orbit. 
Uh, so the Kerbal Space Program way to do things is always just add more boosters. So we're just gonna sort of assume that this will work. Let's add four of these doodads. And uh, maybe we'll put some nose cones on them to reduce the drag. What are nose cones for these things? That's too big. That guy. Nope, too small. Where's the correct nose cone for these bad boys? Do, 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 do. This guy? There we go. Too big, too small, just right. Goldilocks and nose cones. Alright, so we've got some extra boosters, but we need to... Alright, so we actually we don't want those just like that. We need decouplers, radial, deco nope, I want radial. Uh, radial decouplers for those, just like that. Alright, let's fix our staging. So we want to launch all the engines at once. Then launch the decoupler, then that. So now what's going to happen? We'll fire all five engines. These guys will burn out first. Then we will drop them, uh, and then we will continue just like this. My guess is this is enough fuel to get us into a full orbit. It's just a guess. I haven't actually done this ahead of time. Maybe I should have prepared. Alrighty. Do, 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 do. All right, so throttle up to full, double check our staging, and up we go. Now we're going real fast. So I'm actually gonna throttle down the main engine quite a bit. Not gonna turn over too much because these engines aren't exactly stable. Drop them, all right, there we go. Now we get that turn going. That gravity turn. Go, go, go sideways. And you see very quickly we're very high up. We got a lot of speed really quickly in this. Go around. All right. Now we let our gravity turn progress. It's still in the atmosphere, so I'm still not quite full throttle. I'm going to watch uh, our trajectory here so I can gauge when we get to the top. So my goal at this point is to get the spaceship out of the atmosphere, and then I'm going to burn straight sideways, and we'll see what that does. 60,000, I want to get to like 75 or 80 or so. 75, right, cut the engines. So now we cut the engines, and we have a good amount of fuel left. So now we're just going to coast. We're going to let the spaceship coast all the way up to here. Um, so what this is underlying is when you burn your rocket engine actually has a huge effect. If I were to burn sideways right now, that affects all the rest of my trajectory. Whereas if I burn when I'm at the top, that affects my trajectory when I'm up there. Um, I know that's not a great explanation of it. It's a little hard to intuit. Hopefully I uh, didn't just break the game. Um, but we'll see what happens when we get to the top. So I'm gonna slowly plan. No, it's not planning. Let's just do it by eye. Wait until we get just about 80,000. And we're gonna burn directly sideways, just like that. All right, so wait until we get to, but we'll start at about 70 or 75 or so. Uh, almost there. 69 and 70 kilometers. All right, now we burn just sideways and look what happens to our orbit. It starts to really widen out. It's actually burning a little early. Let's wait until we get a little closer to the top. There's this thing called the Oberth effect, which states that in order to get the maximum bang for your buck when it comes to changes in velocity, you want to burn at the slowest possible speed. Um, and there's lots of Wikipedia articles that describe this, and there's lots of implications for how to fly a rocket. But in this case, You'll see our speed's going down because we're sort of reaching the top of our arc. Imagine throwing a baseball, right? The baseball moves slowest at the top of the arc, which is really what we've got here. It's just instead of the baseball, it's a spacecraft. So we're waiting to get to the top of our arc, and that's when we're moving the slowest. And that's when we'll initiate our, uh, our rocket burn. So we're not quite there yet. It's still slowing down a little bit. I'm still not confident we have enough fuel. So I'm going to try and make this as efficient as we can. And three, two, one, go. All right, let's watch our orbit. I'm not sure we're gonna have enough fuel. Nope, why does the game keep doing that? There we go. Getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger. Are we gonna go all the way around? Ah, not quite enough fuel. But you can see if we had a bit more fuel, this line would eventually keep going and we'd fall. So you can sort of see the effect happening here. You start to fall slowly, right? We're going sideways so fast, over 2,000 meters per second, which is 5,000 kilometers an hour, which is 
uh, 4,000, 3,800 miles per hour, something like that. So I'm very fast speed. Um, we're going that way, sideways, so fast that gravity actually can't pull us down fast enough. And so we go to the side of the planet, as opposed to immediately dipping back in the atmosphere. So you can see, if we zoom like this way maybe a bit, a little bit more fuel, we'd go all the way around. All right. Um, let's make that happen. Do, 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 do. More fuel, more fuel, more fuel. Da, 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 da. And then let's just more boosters. Boom. Check our staging. All right. Let's try that again. I think there are simpler ways to get to orbit, but let's just go a little faster on this. Da, 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 da. Bottle up, and off we go. Begin our gravity turn. Do, 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 do. more this way. Alright, I think we might have enough fuel this time. We'll see. Alright. Let's actually make sure we have enough fuel. This is called the maneuver node editor, so I can sort of plan there we go, that's an orbit, 73,000. Um, and I can see how much fuel that maneuver is going to take, 1,500 meters per second of delta V. How much delta V do I have? Uh, my readout doesn't show me. Oh, well. We'll try it anyway. Do, 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 do. Waiting until we get to the top of the orbit. All right, right about there. And go. Come on. Da. Let's just do it here. Uh, I don't know. There's uh, not that much fuel. Let's see. It's going to be kind of close. 900 meters per second, 800 meters per second. Oh, it's going to be close. I don't know if we're going to get there. I don't know. You have to go sideways real fast. 400. 300. 200. Oh, I think we're going to make it. 100. And shut off. Do a little bit more. 15, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. 3, 2, 1. A little bit extra. Come on. A little bit more. A little bit more. And off. There we go. All right. We're in orbit. Not much fuel left. Now you can see our trajectory is, in fact, going all the way around the planet. And so we can sort of go a little faster. See, we're going this way so fast that gravity actually can't pull us down. And so we go around instead. And this is what every satellite around the planet Earth does and any other planet that has satellites. Now the real trick is planning maneuvers to go to other planets. Like, that's the moon. That's, uh, that's too much. When we get to the moon, we do something. Let's set our target. Something like that. So there we go. So if we went, if I spent that much fuel at that time, I'd eventually encounter the moon. And that is what is called a transfer, or a Holman transfer is the technical term. Um, from one orbit to another. So that is how you get spaceships from one side to the other. And I can explain why we burn this way and how much fuel it takes and the most efficient way to do it, but I think that's enough blabbering for one video. It's now 17 minutes, and uh, I'm going to end it there.
Although, maybe what we should do is just for funsies. Let's, this is, oh, okay, another myth we can dispel. How do you get back to the planet? So, everybody in every movie you've ever seen, if you're in space, you're in a spaceship like this, and you want to go down to the planet. So what do they do? They face the planet, and they burn straight down. Which is actually the, one of the least efficient ways to get back to the planet. No spaceship would ever do this. This is not how you come back from space. When you're in space, if you want to come back, all you need to do is stop going sideways so fast. In fact, if I slow down my sideways movement just a little bit, then this arc is going to hit the atmosphere. And if you hit the atmosphere, you hit air. And if you hit air, you slow down. And that's going to slow down your horizontal movement even more. And so all you need to do is just skim the atmosphere, and you start to come back to the planet. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do that. So we'll wait until we're... Make sure we can do this when it's light outside. Um, because the game does simulate night and day, and coming back at nighttime is boring. So we'll come around it's just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Wait until we get to that yellow marker. Do, do, do. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to burn It's called a retrograde, which means against our current direction of travel. So there's the planet. So like I said, at night, nothing's particularly interesting. So we're traveling that way, like away from into the screen right now, opposite the direction the ship is pointed. So when we fire our engines, we're going to slow down our speed, and we'll see our speed drop here. And we'll, we'll do that here. I cannot open this menu for the life of me. So we'll do it here anyway. So I'm going to burn my engines just a little bit. And then we'll come back to the map view. And now we'll see where the lowest point is about 60,000, which is actually still a little high. So I'll just lower it a little more. There we go. So now you see we're not, we're still in orbit, technically, but the orbit intersects with the atmosphere. And that's it. That was a quick little burn backwards. And now watch what happens. So we'll go back to our spaceship, come around to the light side of the planet. Where's the planet? There it is. It's sunrise. Look at that. Look how pretty. And now because we burned previously and we lowered our orbit, at this time you should see that we start to actually want to point retrograde. Any second now, we're going to intersect with the atmosphere a little faster. There we go. Now we come down, watch our altitude, 80,000 on top. 79, 78, 77, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, now we're hitting the atmosphere. And all we did was burn backwards a little bit. And now you'll see uh, our speed is going to still climb because we're going down and gravity is accelerating us. But in a minute, you'll start to see the heating hitting the atmosphere uh, and our speed will drop. Uh, and because we're hitting the atmosphere going sideways as opposed to straight down, we can spend more time slowing down in the upper atmosphere. Right, imagine you know the atmosphere is this big. If you go straight through it, that's, say, one mile. But if you go to a long, sloping slant, you might have five or ten miles to slow down. And the longer you can spend slowing down, the less dramatic the experience is for the spacecraft, and the slower you'll ultimately be going by the time you get to the ground. And so our goal is to get this thing slow enough that we can activate our parachute and attempt to land safely. So we're still not quite slowing down. Let's see what happens in a few seconds. All right, we're starting to see some atmospheric heating. I'm actually going to burn all of my fuel to slow us down as much as we can. Just to make sure that we survive this time around. Yeah, we're definitely going slow enough now. We won't die. That was totally unnecessary. And the only reason I did that was to make sure the rocket doesn't blow up from atmospheric heating. If we were building this with a little bit more effort, we probably would put heat shields, maybe on it to prevent it from overheating. Um, but because we didn't do that, because I was lazy in building this quickly, that was a quick cheat. Not strictly necessary in order to re-enter. All right. 834. Long video, I apologize. Hopefully you learned something. If you didn't learn anything, then Milo's gonna be, not Milo, Max. Max will be really sad. Say hi, Max. All right, re-entering speed is still increasing, but slowly. Any second now, like usually when you get under 30, the atmosphere starts to get pretty thick is when things will start to slow down. 
There we go. We're still going pretty quick. 27,000 meters up, 27,000 kilometers. Slow down faster, please. Really would like to save Jebediah Kerman. Oh no, don't turn around, don't turn around. Stay pointed this way. So the engine is taking most of the heating right now. The engine can survive a lot more heat than the capsule can because it's the engine. All right, now we're slowing down pretty fast, good. We can't open the parachute until about 300 meters per second or so. So we have to hope that we slow down that much. 600. Actually, had I saved some of that fuel, we could use it now and do a powered descent, kind of like SpaceX does on the barge. Uh, and in fact, there are many YouTubers out there making Kerbal Space Program videos emulating exactly what SpaceX does. All right, now we are going slow enough to open the parachutes, but if I open them now, we will be coasting for forever. So let's get a little bit lower. And how about we launch it? Now? That's not good. It didn't launch. Why, why didn't... Why? why? All right, well, it's going to blow up. Sorry. Oh, no, we might survive. We might survive. Nope. There goes the parachute. Now it decides to launch. Great. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. That's how it works. I uh, hope you found that educational, and uh, feel free to ask any questions. If this was cool, maybe I'll make another video uh, about whatever you want to see. I might have played this game a little too much back in the day. All right. Hasta la...